Good morning. Good morning. It's so nice to see you all out here on this lovely Palm Sunday. We ask that you come along with us as we continue to lift up our neck, lift up the name of the Lord through song. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. How many of you know God is good? Oh, yes, God is good. He's good all the time. And I believe all the time God is good. Can you rest on your feet? Because this is the day that the Lord has made. I don't know about you, but I will rejoice and be glad in it. With everything I got, I came to give it to God today. From the clapping of my hands to the uplifting of my voice, from the standing on my feet, God is worthy to be praised. Yes, I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. And the humble shall hear thereof. Oh, magnify. Oh, magnify. The Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. From your neighbor to your left and your right. We all come to give God glory. This is Palm Sunday. This is that triumphal day where the Lord made his royal ride into Jerusalem. And I am here today to be like everybody else. Grab whatever I can to honor God. He's worthy to be praised. That the Bible says they grab branches from trees and began to honor the Lord. And in that same fashion, with uplifted hands, with branches in my hand, I give God praise. I worship him in spirit and in truth. He's worthy to be praised. Yes, he is. God's been good to me. And I am so grateful that God has blessed my life. He woke me up this morning. Started me on my way. And for that, I tell him thank you. Hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. Yes, God. Y'all better be careful. This is a good time to tell him thank you. Because he's mighty good God. Oh, God be praised. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You can be seated if you so desire. Amen. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Father, we say thank you today. Because, Father, as we come to worship you, we want you to inhabit the praises of your people. Make fallow the ground the souls of your people. That, Father, while we sit at the cross beneath, we want to hear from heaven above. So, God, make our worship rich. Like caviar on a cracker. God, make it rich. That, Father, when we leave this place, we know we've encountered you. That whatever it is that we need, that, Father, you will meet us at that need in this moment. And, God, even... If we don't need you here with us, but we need you somewhere else, taking care of something that we left to come here, that, Father, by the time we get back to our homes, by the time we get back to the hospital to visit uh, the persons we left, by the time we get back to the places we need you, that, God, the situation will begin to turn around, that things will begin to shift in that atmosphere. And, Father, while we worship you here, you will begin to manifest your presence in other places. So, Father, we love you, we adore you, and we thank you for what you're about to do in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. And the blessed people of God that believed it said amen. 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 We'll be blessed with a selection from our choir.
Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, this is good to be in the number today. Uh, I just want to pause real quick and just thank God for these youth ushers. Can we give them a hand today? Amen. Amen. It's a beautiful thing when the pastor even can contribute to the usher board. Amen. Uh, we like to see Aaron and my on the door. Amen. Amen. However, 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 we got we got first place color guard, right? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. I saw I saw the pictures. I saw the pictures that you took. They were having a band competition over at uh, the high school across the street. What's that Indian land uh, across the street? And and yes, we got champions in the church worship center. Yeah. First place. First place. Amen. I'm telling you, that's the spirit of excellence right there. That's the spirit of excellence. And so we thank God for our, our youth and our children who continue to operate. Uh, but they can't do it without good guidance from parents. So I praise y'all too. Grandparents, aunts, uncles, amen. Godparents, everybody. I praise y'all because, you know, kids need a family. They need a village in order to, you know, re reinforce what mom and dad and everybody's doing at home. Amen. All right. Uh, at the beginning of the school year, my wife, she gives teachers a hard, not a hard time. She, she makes sure that the, the teachers know that they got parental presence. And she asks them all the time, how can we reinforce what you're doing in the classroom at home? And so, uh, and so typically what we want to be able to do, I don't know when it changed. I don't know when it changed when folk don't want the village to help them raise their child. I don't know when it changed. Uh, but, but, but my wife and I tell people, if you want us to watch over your children, if we can't raise them like we raise ours, you might want to keep them at your house. <laughs> <laughs> because when you come in here, you don't walk on furniture in the house. <laughs> If yours used to walking on furniture, there's consequences to come with that. Amen. CPS might be watching me online, so I ain't going to say exactly what those consequences are. However, <laughs> there are swift consequences to come with not following rules. And so if I can't raise them like I raised mine, well, keep them, keep them with you and keep them with you. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, my, my, we got to act right. Amen. Because I, I told my oldest son, when if you act the fool, when I show up, I'm going to act the fool. <laughs> but if you act like you got some sense, when I show up, I act like I got some sense. How you act going to determine how I act when I get there. You understand? Okay. All right. Y'all, y'all, let's go to scripture. Luke chapter 19. <laughs> Luke chapter 19. Amen. The context of our lesson today starts in verse 28 and concludes in verse 44. However, due to the brevity of the text and the length of it, I, I'm going, I'm going only read a few verses, amen. But your homework this week is, is read this story. Starting at verse 28, read this story. But I'm going to start reading at verse 37, as the screen tells you. And I'm going to conclude at verse number 40. Now, if you're turning to it from your device to your physical Bible, when you get to Luke chapter 19, would you let me know by saying amen? amen. If you're not there yet, but you're trying to find it, say wait on me. I got you, I got you, I got you. Luke chapter 19. I want to make sure we're there because I don't want you thinking I'm making this up later, okay? Luke chapter 19. Luke chapter 19. Starting at verse number 37. From the thundering diction of the King James Version of the Bible, you should find these words. And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. I ain't make this up. This is right here in the Bible. Is that, is that what your Bible say? Uh, to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen. Verse number 38 says, saying, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Verse 39 says, and some of the Pharisees, I know we ain't got no Pharisees in here today. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said to him, master, 
rebuke thy disciples. Verse number 40 says, and he answered and said unto them. Now, this is red letters right here in my Bible. So Jesus is talking. I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Is that what your Bible says? Amen. Amen. It's prayer time, saints. And we want to pause in this moment to pray. To, to pray because prayer still works. Prayer still works. And you, or maybe someone you know, need prayer. And so in this time, will you just call that name out that you want heaven to hear? Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you, God, because we recognize you have all power, power to heal, power to deliver, power to set free. Father, you have power. And God, right now, we call upon your name because we recognize that, God, with that kind of power, we need your presence in our lives. We need you to not just touch us, but touch the persons that are connected to us. Father, we need you to manifest your miracle signs and wonders in the lives of the people that are wrestling with disease. God, we need you to be able to begin to touch our finances because we're wrestling with debt. God, right now, we want you uh, to touch our minds because it seems as though we uh, don't know which way to turn. And God, right now, we're asking you to guide our steps and illuminate our path. That, Father, we can go in the direction you would have us to go. But, Father, just like you are the pilot in the car, God, we want you not just take control of the wheel, but keep your foot on the pedals. That, God, we want to move as fast as you want us to go. And, God, we want to slow down when you want us to slow down. Father, we move out the way and allow you to have your way because, God, we recognize that if it had not been for you on our side, we wouldn't have made it this far along the way. And so, God, right now, we're asking and calling upon you because there were some names that have been called out. And, God, I might not know the issue or the concern, but, Father, you know. And, Father, since you know in your divine will, show up in your due season. And, God, it's my prayer that you give them strength to continue to keep running the race until you show up to give them exactly what they need. That, Father, give us the strength to keep pressing forward in spite of naysayers and lies. God, give us the strength to keep pressing forward in spite uh, of the lack of resources that we may not have. Give us the strength to continue to move forward in spite of not knowing what to do or where, or where to go. God, give us the strength to keep on standing on your word because God, your word tells us that the race is not given to the swift nor the strong, but those who know how to endure until the end. God, give us the strength to press on the upward way new heights we have to climb every day that father we want to fly like eagles that beneath our wings of love abide God we know you shall take care of us God we recognize that you are the author and the finisher of our faith so God we have the kind of faith that trust you to be able to do what you can because God if we never would have read it in your word uh, we probably wouldn't believe it but father Father, since we read that you can stop deaf, unstop deaf ears, God, we believe it. Since we read in your word that you can open up blinded eyes, then God, we believe it. God, since we read in your word that you can take a little bit and make it so much more, then we believe it. God, since we read in your word that, God, you look beyond our faults and still meet us at our needs. God, right now, we trust and believe that you will and that you can manifest what we need and so God we call upon your name today because we know that you're able and God right now we pray for our country 
that God from the state of South Carolina and the world, that God, we need you to be able to heal our land. Show up in Capitol Hill City Council meetings and county commissioner meetings all across the country so that God, your people, can get an equal footing in life to be able to do what you have called them to do. Now, God, as we, uh, as we conclude here now this prayer, we pray in the name that reigns, rules, still has regency, but yet to return. Yahshua of our Mashiach, Jesus our Christ, our Lord, and our Redeemer. It's in Jesus' holy and righteous name we pray. And the blessed people of God that believe this said amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I want to apologize. I forgot to do the Apostles' Creed. Y'all forgive me? Y'all ain't going to call the bishop on me, are you? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to have our choir come back and sing, and, uh, and then we'll hear what thus saith the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen.
Everything that happened to me, God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. Hallelujah. God did it. Oh, yes, he did it. Amen. Amen. Everything that happened to me, God did it. Yes, God did it. Hey, God. Hey! Hey! Everything that happened to me, <laughs> God did it. Woo. Glory. My, 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 my. You don't know like I know what the Lord has done for me. With this kind of carry it on put me back to my roots I'm reminded of St. Matthew's Temple Church of God in Christ 
Elder Griffin, the pastor, when this kind of carried on what happened, when they start to die down a little bit, he'll stand up and he'll say something like this. He'll say, my soul say yes, 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 Lord. Do it one more time. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. God, we say thank you for an opportunity to remember the fact that you did it. You healed us. You paid it. You opened the door. You dealt with the enemy. You did it, God. And for that, God, we are happy and we say thank you. Thank you for healing. Thank you for delivering. Thank you for setting free. Thank you for manifesting your presence. God, we say thank you today because, God, you're worthy. Now, Father, we recognize we're not here for any doing of our own. We're not here because we've gotten everything right. Not here because we've dotted every I or crossed every T. Not here because of our last name, who we know, or even where we went to school. But, Father, the truth be told, we're only here because of your grace <laughs> and your mercy. Father, I can't testify for anybody else, so I'll testify for myself. Mercy yeah. <laughs> suits my case. So, Father God, have mercy on us. God, right now, have mercy on me. Take control of my head and my heart, my mind and my mouth, and Father, have thine own way. In Jesus' name we pray. And the blessed people of God that believed it said amen. 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 Can we give God a hand clap for these choir, these musicians? Amen. Amen. Thank God. Thank God for all he's done. Oh, go with me to Luke 19. I'm going to cut across the field. I, I, listen, I'm, I wasn't going to preach Luke 19 this morning. I had my sermon done on Thursday, at least I thought. Um, but but I just couldn't send that text out of that sermon. God kept pulling that in my heart to Luke 19. So at the end of service, I'm going to be in the back shaking hands. And if this was for you, just give me some confirmation that, that I, I heard them right. If this is for you. Verse number 37 of Luke 19 says, and when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they have seen. Is that what your Bible say? For a few moments in time that we have to share, I want to talk to you from the simple subject. God, work it out. Yeah. Oh, God. Thank you, ushers, for your service and your sacrifice. God, <laughs> work it out. Uh, let, let, me, let me just say it this way. God is able to work it out. 
I don't know what brought you here today. I don't know what you came in here dealing with. I don't know what you wrestle with from time to time, but I am here to testify without even knowing what you have as your testimony or as your prayer request. God can work it out. He's able to heal where there is sickness. He's able to give strength where there's weakness. He's able to manifest all kind of miracles. He can work it out. Oh, God, when I was preparing this Saturday morning, because I told you my other sermon was done Thursday. Oh, yes, God, God, let me see the mere fact that God is in the workout business. I wish I had a witness right through here that can testify that Pastor Fight, you don't have have to go too far you can stop by my pube and I can testify he can work some things out when I had more month than money he still satisfied my month and still let me keep my little bit of money he can work some things out when I was confused because I thought I was helping people along the way but they still kept dragging my name through the mud oh, but God still elevated me anyway he knows how to work things out oh, that when God is able oh God have mercy to open up doors without even a letter of recommendation and he still gave me the job God can work things out. Uh, I can testify. I used to have syrup sandwiches, but now I can eat what I want. He know how to work things out. Uh, you don't know how he can take you from poverty to prosperity. He can work some things out. Oh, God, have mercy. Let me, let me not be long today because, because when we get into this passage of Scripture, this is the first Palm Sunday. And each gospel tells this story in each gospel. Matthew chapter 21, Mark chapter 11, Luke chapter 19, and John chapter 12. See, we get their reflection on what happens. But we, got, we get the details on what God does to pull out all of the stops. And he puts all the pieces together for this first Palm Sunday. This is, the, this is the God that works things out. See, when he arrives to the holy city, all eyes are on him. This is no ordinary time. This is at Passover time. This is when all the pious Jews would come together, pious pilgrims that made their way to the holy city to celebrate in remembrance of what God had did for them in Exodus chapter number 12. Oh, yes, God, I told myself Saturday morning uh, when I was writing this at my desk, I told myself if they shouted there, I wouldn't lean on it. But since I didn't see you say anything, uh, let me see if I can see if I can help you. Because if you read Exodus chapter number 12, God was sending one last plague to them. Uh, Oh, yes, God. And it was going to affect everybody. Uh, he said, but what you have to do is you have to take uh, the blood of a lamb uh, and take the ceremonial bush of the hyssop branch, dip it in the basin and take the blood and put it over your doorposts. And because you got to recognize we, uh, we are in a bloody religion. Mm -hmm. And when you understand that we are in a bloody religion, it took some blood to save my life. And I'm so glad glad that the Exodus chapter 12 teaches us that when the deaf angel saw the blood he passed over the house and there's somebody that's sitting right here in these pews and in this sanctuary this morning that can testify I shouldn't be here right now but the blood saved my life. I, I wish I had a witness here. I told myself I wasn't going to get too happy in this introduction but the blood saved my life. I, I don't know about you but if it had not been for some blood that was shed on my behalf I wouldn't be here right now the blood saved my life they are remembering the moments oh yes God that God saved them God is coming uh, on a donkey a lowly animal uh, not a stallion or a white horse but everyone is looking at him with some celebration but also some hateration uh, he's there Be they began to wave oh uh, yes God their palm branches unto him and we get all of the details 
details of this first one because God is working some things out. This is the start of a week where people are saying Hosanna on Sunday, but saying crucify him by the end of the week. You got to recognize that the same people who love you today are the same people that's going to turn their back on you tomorrow. You got to understand God says I'm working this out this way because I want you to see that by the end of all of this there is a reason for why this kind of things happen. He knows how to work things out. Well I only got two quick things I want to tell you this morning and I promise you I'll bid you farewell. He worked things out number one so that sinners might be redeemed. I told myself I ain't going to preach Easter. I'll come back next week. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try to get my good Easter speech together. Amen. All right. Uh, he works things out so that sinners might be redeemed. So the sinners might be redeemed. All of us stand in need of redemption. Okay. Uh, 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 the person sitting in your pew needs redemption. I ain't say your neighbor. I said the one sitting in your pew <laughs> needs redemption mm. needs to be reclaimed or reconstituted into the family of God because all we like sheep have gone astray David teaches us that we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. That's Psalm 51. But Paul said he or we, oh yes God, would when we would do good, oh yes God, we seem not to because all of us seem to fall short of the glory of God. All of us from uh, the back of the choir stand even uh, to those standing out in the vestibule. All of us need God because we need to be redeemed. Redeemed, redeemed. I like that hymn that says we're prone to wander and prone to leave the God I love. I go astray from time to time. Why pull away from the will and the word of almighty God? I need redemption. Some of you can't shout about that because you don't understand this word redemption. See, we all have a sin stain that we need God to redeem us from. Yes, it's called God kind of work where he works out a plan and a strategy to redeem us. Redemption means an act of atoning for the fault or mistakes that we may have made. But the Latin prefix of deemed is re. Basically, it means again. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, God. To consider worthy again. Mm. Uh, to consider to be profitable again. To, uh, to be useful again. Uh, oh, God have mercy. Some of us uh, some of us yes God gave the world all that we had oh yes God uh, you you either held the line or you bumped and grind you gave the world all you had and by the time you came to Jesus you felt like you ain't have anything else but when he redeems you he restores you back to where you were again and I don't know where you are today but when you find yourself weak he can restore you back again and when you find yourself left out he can restore you back again and ask somebody here today to say I came to be restored because I need to be redeemed. I, I know I've sinned but God can redeem. It's a sacrificial system. It's a sacrificial system where blood had to be shed. In the Old Testament sacrificial system they took a bull they took a dove they took a turtle dove uh, uh, but watch this they also had a paschal lamb paschal a uh, lamb p-a-s-c-h uh, a-l paschal lamb this is the passover lamb this is the scapegoat that all sins were upon the animal were upon the animal but watch this i like the way john put it he looks at jesus christ and says behold the lamb of god so it's not the uh, the exact same lamb, oh, yes, God, that they had to put on the altar. But now here comes another lamb, mm, God have mercy, who's making his regal ride into Jerusalem. I, I, I like it here. He says, behold the lamb of God, that he comes to save the sins of the world. So as a result, the hymn writer was right when he says, all to Jesus. I surrender because what goes on the lamb is going to go on the cross. Oh, God, have mercy. Matter of fact, this is a spoiler alert. He's going to shed blood for me. 
Uh, this is uh, redemption, not from animals, but the redemption now is our reward. Mm. This redemption is now our reward. Watch the text. Jesus says to Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house. If you read the earlier passage of scripture, starting in verse 1 of chapter number 19, he says, Zacchaeus, I'm going to your house. But Zacchaeus was the chief tax collector who should have been helping his people, but instead he was helping the government. He was overcharging the people. Uh, but when he encounters Jesus, Zacchaeus says, I'll make restitution. And Jesus' response to Zacchaeus is, I don't need restitution. I'm trying to make reclamation. Uh, he says, I'm trying to redeem the loss. By the time you get to verse number 10, he says, I came to seek and save which is a loss. So, so he came to say, you know what? If you have sin, I came to redeem you from that sin. Okay, wait a minute. You either are redeemed from something or you need redemption from that something. Okay, let me test my theory. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. <laughs> so if you are redeemed, you got something to say. <laughs> so wait, you either are redeemed from something or you need to be redeemed from that something. So let me see if you're redeemed. If you are redeemed, the Bible says, let the redeemed <laughs> of the Lord say so that if you are redeemed you can testify I am redeemed bought with a price God has saved my life I am redeemed are there any redeemed people that can testify that he looked beyond my faults and met me at my knees I am redeemed I'm redeemed to the point that he decided to pick me up and turn me around place my feet on a solid ground I am redeemed I'm redeemed from the sin the sick world that I was reared and raised in I am redeemed I'm redeemed from the stuff that I used to do that God decided to take the taste out of my mouth take the desire out of my heart and press me on a new way that God has redeemed me okay not only not only I gotta go so that sinners might be redeemed but number two is the same, similar, but not the same. Number two, watch this. God works it out so that the son might be our redeemer. Oh, God have me. Okay. Uh, I got to go. Um, <laughs> so that the son might be our redeemer. Mm. The son might be our redeemer. Uh, no longer using animals for redemption. That's the old system. So you had to do that over and over. Every Sunday you had to come with an animal to put on the altar. You know, I was in class this week. And, uh, you know, even though Clinton is a Christian college, uh, I, got, I got some other faiths sitting in my class. And they try to, you know, I guess call their parents or, uh, you know, they try to question me in class. I had a young man, a young man on Tuesday, he came to class. He said, I got a question. I ain't even, I ain't even gave my man a cured lesson yet. He said, so I got a question. Uh, you don't even know what I'm teaching today. But you, you got, he got a question. Uh, uh, he said, uh, you a Christian, ain't you? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I am. Uh, unapologetically. Amen. Uh, he, says, he says, then why y'all worship on Sunday? He said, uh, he says, Sabbath is from, from, from sunset Friday uh, to Saturday. Why y'all worship on Sunday? I said, that's a good question because we in the season for this kind of question right here. Uh, I said, you got the right one, baby. Amen. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I said, I said, you, you correct. You correct. Saturday, Sabbath. Uh, however, however, uh, when Jesus died, yeah. there were some women that showed up to worship him wow. on a Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, they showed up. Here it is. To take care of the body <laughs> on Sunday. Mm. Uh, they, they, they showed up with stuff in their hand to honor him on Sunday. Oh, God. Uh, but when they got there, he wasn't there. <laughs> so, wait, I like the women show up with stuff in my hands to worship him on a Sunday. <laughs> but when I get there, I'm glad he got enough power 
power not to stay in the tomb, but early one Sunday morning. Get up with our power in his hand. Okay, I, I'm trying. I'm trying to press my way. He the one and only redeemer for my sins. And I don't know. I don't know how you feel about it. But but truth of the matter is, nobody but Jesus could do what was necessary to completely redeem us. Because when Jesus does it. He's the only sinless individual to satisfy the sinfulness, sinfulness in me. Yeah. Let me say that again because I don't know if you heard it correctly. He's the only one to completely redeem us. Because when Jesus does it, he's the only sinless individual. Oh, God, have mercy. That means he carried no sin to satisfy the sinfulness in all of us. What can wash away my sin? Oh, God. I said I wasn't going to do this. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? I know it ain't first Sunday. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, God. Let me close here. Now Jesus comes to Jerusalem riding on a donkey. A donkey that's never been ridden before. An untamed animal. But when Jesus get it, it seemed to have some sense. I ain't got time to preach that this week. But uh, oh yes, God, I'm going to see if I can lean just a little bit closer here. The Lord has a need of it is what he told his disciples. And when they got it, the man who owned it said, what y'all doing? And he said, God has need of it. And watch this. Not another word was spoken about it. Because when you give God a yes, he'll take care of everything else. Jesus rides on the donkey. And watch what the Bible says. The Bible says they took their cloaks off and put it on the donkey so that Jesus could be on it as a sign of regard for Jesus. Uh, yes, God. And John records uh, they went and cut down palm branches and cried out, Hosanna. Now, I like this word, Hosanna, because when you look at the Greek word of the word Hosanna, it translates to our English words to mean save now. Mm, God have mercy. That I don't need to wait till uh, Easter. I don't need to wait till New Year's. I don't need to wait till Mother's Day or Father's Father's Day, I need you to say now that every time they said Hosanna there was something in front of them that they needed salvation from and specifically to the first century God was what they felt like God was going to save them from the tyranny of the Roman government but he came not just to redeem them from government but to redeem them from their sins he's working it out they say bless to the king who came in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I'm done now. He, they're shouting in celebration. They love Jesus enough to be able to call on his name. But watch this. In the crowd, they say there are two groups of people. There are disciples and Pharisees. I got to go. Uh, the disciples said, Hosanna. The Pharisees said it don't take all of that <laughs> oh god have mercy I, I, he said he said jesus said uh the pharisees asked him can you not tell uh these people to be quiet it's too much noise too much carrying on jesus says from the created to the creation <laughs> if these don't praise me then some of the creation the rocks <laughs> Oh, go, go find uh, some anthropomorphic expressions. They're going to they gonna begin to inhale and exhale. Some rocks are going to be able to open up, but they don't have mouths. But uh, if these mouths don't open up their mouths, some rocks will get some mouths and start to open it up and say, Hosanna, uh, be the highest. That regardless of that, they open up their mouth, something going to open up their mouth and begin to give glory. Because when this kind of carrying on happens, uh, you're going to have to rejoice uh, because God is good. Yeah. I, 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 I don't like folk to shout without substance. Uh, because we reverence him. That's why they took palm branches and began to honor him. They revered him. This is no ordinary God. They rejoice because the issue is not, it's not an issue. But what the thing is here is all disciples ought to rejoice. 
if you read the King James Version of the Bible, and I'm closing now, uh, King James Version of the Bible said, the whole company of disciples rejoice. So you can tell the difference between disciples and Pharisees. But watch this. They're rejoicing, the Bible says, based off of miracles they've seen. So in other words, they're rejoicing because of their reflection of what he has done. The miracles they've seen. I got to get out of here, uh, but, but, but somebody here today that can testify, uh, I'm not a Pharisee, I'm a disciple. And the reason why I can say I'm a disciple is because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, I can't stop or I can't help but give God glory because he's been too good to me. That my mind gets in the way because when I walk in here, I hear people say uh, that I'm tired and I'm lonely and I'm hurt. But my mind says uh, that by his stripes, I'm already healed. That my mind tells me that when I was sinking deep in sea, far from a peaceful shore, very deeply stained with fear, sinking to rise no more, it was the master of the sea that heard my despairing cry and from the waters he lifted me now safe am I I can't help it because when I think about how God has opened doors when I think about how God has made ways when I think about how God has satisfied my shortages he's been too good He's been too good. My God is a mighty help in the time of trouble. My God is a help in a weary land. My God is a company keeper. My God is a way maker. I can't help that when I think about it, God has, God will, God can. Oh yes he can, oh yes he will, oh yes he has, God is, yes he is. Is there anybody here that can testify that God's been mighty good to me? Yes he has, he's kept me in my time of trouble, he's helped me along the way, he's given me peace in the midst of a storm that God is yes he is God is good all the time and all the time can you stand can you stand if you can God work it out I don't need anybody else to do it for me but God. I need God because he is my redeemer. In my time of trouble, in my time of sin, he redeems that which is lost. Listen, if you're here today, all of us at some point have been lost. If you're here today and you say, you know what? I'm tired of wandering with no direction. I'm going to put myself in the hands of a master who found it not robbery to get on a donkey and to come in to save all the world. I want to honor him by giving him my life. If you're here today and you say, I want to come to Jesus, I just want you to make your way to the altar if you're here today if you're here today secondly you say I'm I want to connect to a body of faith a body of faith in which I can grow and develop I want you to from online to in person it doesn't matter where you are you can respond to these cries if you're here today and you say, I want to be a part of the Steel Hill family, I just want you to come. I just want you to come. Last but not least, 
you want to honor God today by bringing what's in your hand to the altar and saying, Father, I cry unto you, needing your presence in my life. Relationship with God, one of the foundations of that is communication. If you want to talk to the Lord today, this altar is open for you. If you want to come for prayer, you come. Say your prayer. When you're finished, you can go right back to your seat. Is there one today? Yes, God. You may not be coming to be saved. You may not be coming to be a part of our fellowship. You may not be coming for prayer. If you so desire to be seated, you may be seated if you desire to do so. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the people who've came to this altar. Father, the concerns that have been dropped off to you, that, Father, we have deposited into your hands. Because, God, we recognize in our hands it won't get healed. It won't get fixed. It won't, we won't get the kind of result that we need. So, Father, we came to place them in your hands because, God, in your hands, you can do much more with it than what we can do in our hands. So, Father, we came to this exchange window and God, we're wanting you to give us back something we can use. God, something that can help us in this land, help us in this life, help us along the way. God, continue to help us. And Father, it's my prayer you respond to theirs. Give them the strength, the hope, the joy, the peace, the long-suffering, the kindness, and the gentleness that they need in order to do your will and your work for such a time as this. God, we thank you in advance for how you're going to continue to bless your people and how you're going to continue to restore and redeem. We love you, we adore you, and we thank you 
in the one name that reigns. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. How many of you believe God can work it out? Yes, he can. God can work it out. Listen, let me first start here by saying thank you to all those who attended on yesterday to the line dancing celebration and fun. You know, it's, it's good that the pastor can teach you how to dance. Amen. I, why y'all laughing? Amen. But anyway, no, thank you so much for your attendance on yesterday. We had such an awesome time. As a result of such an awesome time, uh, uh, there's some some food left over and so unlike yesterday today sundays lent doesn't count on sunday so uh if you didn't get any of them wings or meatballs on yesterday because you were honoring the fast uh get in the front of the line at the fellowship hall first come first serve it's not a whole lot left but whatever's left we want you to take part and have uh so the god knows how to bless in an overflow way uh, that if you are patient, ooh, God, and faithful over a few things, he'll make you ruler over much more. So uh, since you ate the salad yesterday, uh, you, can, you, can, you can have some chicken today. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. I don't know if there's any chicken left. Maybe some meatballs left. Um, but you can have some meatballs. Either way, uh, you, you can have some that's left over. So thank you to Sheena. She's traveling. And I want to thank God for her publicly, uh, for her diligence and planning and making sure uh, that things came to fruition. If you had a part in play and you partnered with her, uh, I say thank you to you as well. Uh, I want to uh, thank our instructor, uh, Sister Nikita. Uh, Lewis Gibbs, who did a phenomenal job teaching all of us these different dances. Some of them, I said, I can't do. I got to preach tomorrow. My back. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, but no, and Brother Kion Courtney, who came and took pictures, as well as uh, DJ Stevie. Well, he said he ain't a DJ. He said he just play music. <laughs> <laughs> to play music. Amen. So thank you, uh, Stevie. And um, I think uh, somebody, who, who put the photo booth together? Who did? Shante, thank you so much. Thank you. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Amen. So thank you all so much for that. Um, all right, Fred, I'm ready. Uh, oh, I think birthdays. Yes. Rem Wolf. <laughs> yes. Saturday coming. Rem Wolf. Uh, April 2nd, Natasha Witherspoon, April 3rd, Sam Morrison, and April 5th, Maya Fight. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to each of you. Happy anniversary to Jerry and Mary Timps. Uh, April 1st. Bro, Jerry is out there. I would ask him uh, how many years. Is it? Miss Mary, where Miss Mary at? <laughs> yes, ma'am. How many years? 19 years. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Have happy marriage and love, happiness, joy, peace, all that in your marriage. We, we pray for y'all uh, and continue to thank you for your service. Teacher of the year. <laughs> Teacher of the year. That's right. That's right. Sister Robin. Uh, Robin is the teacher of the year, uh, Southside uh, Early Childhood Education Center here in Lancaster County School District. We say congratulations, madam, uh, for, for your hard work and your due diligence in serving our children. Thank you so, so much. Uh, 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 we also, in that same vein, while I'm talking about Sister Robin, uh, we got Easter speeches next week. Um, amen. Amen. Uh, I want to thank our trustees because they went and got these beautiful stepping stools. So our children ain't got, they can be at the podium. Uh, yes, God, and they can use them. They can step up if they ain't tall enough. They can be right there. So we're going to have our children next week. If you need a speech for your child, see Sister Robin. Amen. I hope y'all been practicing. I, I tell the story every year, but I tell it next Sunday. Amen. All right. Uh, uh, East speeches. I'm in church every day this week. Yeah, I'm in church every day. Amen. Starting tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, at, I'm at the Ramoth AME Zion Church for the Spring Revival Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Each night start at 7 o'clock. So as a result, we won't have Bible study on Tuesday. So uh, my Bible study members, y'all can come be in Bible study at Ramoth on Tuesday night. All right. 
All right. Please, please don't let your pastor go to Raymond by myself. I would love to see you if humanly possible. Amen. It's, it's south side of Charlotte. Uh, then, okay, yeah, keep that up on the screen. But let me say, I'm going to go in line of my mind. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Raymond. Thursday, uh, district, Lancaster district. It's got Monday, Thursday service. I can't remember where that's at. Oh, there it is, right there. Thank you. El Bethel, Amy Zion Church. Uh, starting at 6.30, starting at 6.30, uh, Monday, Thursday service. And then they're going to have seven last words, but I've been excused from that because on Friday, I'm going to be at, in Charlotte at Little Rock, Amy Zion Church, for their seven last word service. So uh, that started at 6.30, uh, and I'm, I'm preaching, it is finished, word six, yes. So... Uh, if, if you, Charlotte, surrounding area, and you can come, please, I would love, I'd love to see you uh, at Little Rock. Amen? Amen. And then uh, giving. Yes, Lord, this is a good time to give. Amen. I ain't got no help. My wife in here? Uh, she, okay, she normally say amen during giving time. Amen. And she ain't had me this time. Amen. She said it. She just didn't know she's sitting closer normally. Amen. All right. Okay. So we say, we say uh, forgiving three ways to give by a mail, uh, online, givelify, and in person. If you go out this door to my left, there's a basket right there. Matter of fact, I'll be standing at that door this week, I believe. Uh, and so uh, you can walk out that door, shake your pastor's hand, and drop your gift in the basket. Thank you so much for your stewardship. Uh, March Madness is going on. There's no perfect brackets in ESPN poll. I saw that the other day. ESPN uh, has no bracket. Out of 22 million submitted brackets, there ain't one perfect one. Grand Canyon and JMU messed all y'all brackets up. Amen. Uh, hallelujah. But my Tar Heels on the way to L.A. Yes, Lord, have mercy. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? I can see devils not clapping their hands. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I can see devils not clapping their hands. <laughs> but it's all good. It's a, we'll find out where y'all going at 515 today. Amen. <laughs> you either heading back to Durham or you're on your way somewhere else. Either way, we're going to see what God going to do for you. But thank, but thank you all for your support because I am the co-host for in the Star of Zion and the sports edition of the Star of Zion. Did the courtside chat this week, doing a bracketology and everything. And for those of you who watched the replay and texted me uh, and gave me your feedback or your praise, I appreciate uh, each and every one of you and your support. So we will be live for each championship game also. We'll be live for the women's championship that Sunday. Uh, and then we'll be live for the men's championship on that Monday. And so you can be a part. We'll have special guests to come on the show also uh, that will speak with us, and we'll have some questions for them. Uh, and it's, it's just something new that the Star of Zion is doing uh, to incorporate uh, everybody in their likes and desires. And uh, I actually, uh, I have been asked, since I'm known I'm known now for, for, for my outside cooking. I've been asked that I can submit to this new cooking thing that they're doing. They're they, they doing a new cooking show coming out on the Star Zion. They're doing a new cooking show. So I might be a Chef Boy ID on the show next. You know what I mean? I, I'm going to have to show y'all how to make some ribs real quick. Amen. Yes, Lord. That sounds good on this fast, don't it? Mm. But today Sunday, so I might have to treat myself. Yes, Lord. All right. Amen. Um, all hearts and minds are clear. I think I said all I was need to say. There's no Bible study this week because um, we'll, I'll be in revival. Uh, but also uh, the books for Bible study are on sale. I want to apologize. I left the books. You know, we drove my wife's car this week, and I left them in my car. <laughs> so I'll have them next Sunday, I promise. So those who need a book or want a book, you can purchase it. I'll have it next Sunday. Amen. We repeat after me, if I walk with God, he'll walk with me. If I talk with God, he'll talk with me. If I listen to God, he'll listen to me. If I build for God, he'll build for me. If I work for God, he'll work for me. I love God. Because he first loved me. Amen. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling. 
who is able to present us faultless before his throne with exceedingly great joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, hence, now, and forevermore. Let us come together and sing the threefold amen together. Amen. 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 Come on, turn to somebody and tell them the best is yet to come.